written by a wonderful man by the name of Tommy Dorsey. And uh, was deep in me. And so the phrase is, Precious Lord, take my hand. So, what a wonderful song. So, uh, welcome this morning to the Reign of Christ, the final Sunday of the liturgical year. We welcome today Rob James, who is Associate Professor of Anglican Formation and Studies at Vancouver School of Theology. And Rob will be our preacher today. And we welcome back Michael Deck uh, to preside after covering services at St. Lawrence. So it's a, it's a wonderful Sunday to have folks here and be with us as we celebrate the Eucharist this morning. Uh, the order of service, if you're worshiping with us for the first time, uh, everything you need is found in the bulletin. Uh, but if you do want to follow along with the music, uh, all of the hymns come from the Blue Book today. And our opening hymn is on 525. Thank you.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all our soul, all the desires known, and from you we know the secrets of our heaven. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. yours, but we turn away from your just rule. The power is yours, but we trust in our own power. from the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with phlegm and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what it is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God.
Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, take the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts and use them in your service. Amen. Do take a seat. There are many different ways of counting the year. We usually use calendar years beginning on January the 1st. But of course, there's nothing set in stone about any one particular date. The earth is just going around the sun, and it takes as long as it takes. And we could start on any date, we could call any date the start of the year. And in many places across the world, until only a few hundred years ago, the new year was deemed to begin on the 25th of, of March, which uh, a quick calculation will show is exactly nine months before Christmas Day. The new year was deemed to begin on the conception of Jesus. Other ways of counting the year include the academic year, which often begins, it is said, in September, or the financial or tax year, which in some countries aligns with the calendar year, but where I'm from in England begins bizarrely on the 5th of April. No, it doesn't. It ends on the 5th of April. It starts on the 6th of April. Why that is, is another story. But the church where we are this morning, and the church
book that we take our readings from, the lectionary, is based on this liturgical year. And the liturgical year starts next Sunday, on the first Sunday of Advent. It could have started at several different places, but we start in Advent as we look forward to Christ coming into the world, and then we hear over the course of the year the things that Christ has done. And then the last Sunday of the liturgical year, this Sunday, brings with it the celebration of the reign of Christ. It's a reminder that Christ is the king of the universe and also that we look for Christ to reign in a different way from how the rulers of the world reign. You just need to look at the news very briefly to see some of that. We're reminded of that today, of this reign of Christ having already heard over the course of the whole liturgical year all that Christ did. And just before we return to the start of the liturgical year next Sunday, to hear that Christ not only would come into the world 2,000 years ago, but also to hear the promise that Christ will come again, and that Christ's reign will be manifest for all to experience. The reading that we've just heard from the Gospel of Matthew is about Jesus returning and about the connection between what happens in eternity and what happens here on earth. And the story has some harsh things to say about the consequences of how we act. In summary, the story seems to be saying that when we are unpleasant to someone, we are being unpleasant to Christ. Whenever we help someone, whenever we're kind to someone, we are helping or being kind to Christ. Now in the story, who that someone is, is actually a matter of debate because what the king in the passage says, that's Jesus, he talks about doing this to members of his family. Now maybe you could say, well, that must be people then who are Christians. But I think it's more likely that this means all humanity, or maybe even all creation, everything that God has made. In any event, if we just think about humans for a moment, as none of us are in any position to judge the content of another's faith, it is far safer, even if you think it's just talking about the church, it's far safer to assume that Jesus is talking about everyone. Because who am I to judge who is in and who is out in that sense? But what is more, since all things are created by God, all things are God's creatures, all things are declared good by God in creation, it's far safer to assume that everything is being referred to in this passage. So whenever we are unpleasant or unkind to people or destructive to God's good creation in some other way, it is to Christ that we do these actions. Whenever we act as we know we should, whenever we act as if we were in the reign of Christ, it is pleasingly to Christ that we do those actions also. And this points us towards a fundamental truth that actions have consequences. Choices we make have consequences. And we know this from our day-to-day -day living, but it's also true on an eternal level. Whether we act in a good way or a bad way, we are accountable for our actions. And there will be no hiding or obfuscation, no clever lawyers who can act for us. Our good deeds and our bad deeds will be brought into the light, and we will account. Elsewhere in the Gospels, at Luke 18, 26, the disciples ask Jesus, who on earth then can be saved? Because in another context, Jesus is setting the bar so high. And maybe this is applicable also in this morning's Gospel reading. And Jesus' reply in that passage in Luke is that for humans salvation is impossible. 
but for God, all things are possible. It is the case that no one can be so righteous that they are saved in and of themselves. But by the coming of the reign of Christ, initiated by the incarnation, death and resurrection of Jesus, by God entering into the depths of what it is to be human, by that, the way of salvation is indeed on offer. But despite the fact that we know salvation is, by the grace of God, given to us and, I think, to all of God's creation, that doesn't mean that we can behave just how we like, with no regard to other people or to other things in God's creation. There is something in this morning's reading that isn't so much about salvation as it is about ethics, simply how we are to live as Christians. And the warning of eternal punishment I take not as something for me to apply to anyone else, but rather as a reminder to me to live in an ethical way. And the ethic is this, we are to act as Christ would act. We are to do the things that Christ would do. And often that is difficult or uncomfortable or even dangerous because the world doesn't like it and because the world forces us into choices when no choice is good. But in all of that, Matthew 25 can be returned to time and again as a touchstone for us to see how we are doing. Are we feeding those who need food? Are we clothing those who are naked? And so on. Are we, in summary, living as far as we can into the reign of Christ, right here and now? As far as we can, we are to make that reign a reality for our lives and for the life of the world, for all that God has created. The reading from Ezekiel is helpful as we think on these things. The prophet begins by God saying that God will search for my sheep. And there are a number of very powerful active verbs then that follow. So God will seek for his people, rescue them, feed them, strengthen them. And these verbs appear more than just once in that reading. And then at the end of the passage, the mood changes somewhat. God has done all these things and is promising that God will continue doing all these things. But a human at the end of the passage is set up over the people. And there's a sense at the end that humanity, at least for a time, has the chief responsibility for doing all the things that hitherto God has been doing. Just like the passage from Matthew 25 we know from this passage how God would act, and we are now invited to do this in and for the world and with the world. We know what God's reign looks like. Look at Ezekiel, look at Matthew 25. We know what the reign of Christ is like. So can we be God's people and do this for God's good creation? So with all of this in mind, we are invited to look at ourselves, to look to our own activities in God's creation. We are invited to turn away from poor patterns of behaviour that we've built up, maybe over years, and instead to practise kindness, generosity, mercy, and the other virtues, living right now with the first fruit of the eternal reign of Christ and sharing these fruits with the world. If New Year celebrations tend to include the making of some resolutions, then as the liturgical year closes and as a new one begins, let's commit ourselves to living both in and as the reign of Christ 
living as Christ desires, showing forth Christ's love for the world, and seeing Christ in all people. Amen. Intercessions, petitions, and thanksgiving. Let us with confidence present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. Holy One of Israel. We pray for all those in positions of power, that they may govern with wisdom and integrity, serving the needs of their people, Lord. May your reign come soon. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign, that it may extend your welcome to people of every race and background. Lord, May your reign come soon. We pray for Christians of every tradition that together we may come to understand the royal priesthood you bestowed us in baptism. Lord, may your reign come soon. We pray for those whose commitment to truth brings them into conflict with earthly powers, that they may have the courage to endure and persevere. Lord, may your reign come soon. We pray for this community of faith, that attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, may your reign come soon. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. Hear us as we pray for the fulfillment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus the Christ, to whom be glory and honor and power forever. Amen. Amen. Let the reign of Christ rule in our hearts. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you.
us with Christ in the heavenly realms. May we feed upon the bread of God and drink the royal wine of heaven. Blessed is God forever. Amen.
this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Holy One of Israel, now and forever. Amen.
that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose powers are within us, and infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God, generations and generations, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. So, as Rob mentioned in his sermon, next Sunday begins our new year. Uh, the first Sunday of Advent, then on the second Sunday of Advent, the 10th, there will be a luncheon followed, uh, following the 10 o'clock service. Please let Sybil know if you're planning to attend that luncheon. Uh, that will be one celebration. Then on the 17th, the third Sunday of Advent, there will be a baptism at the, uh, at the 10 o'clock service, and then followed uh, at 3 o'clock by the annual Christmas concert with the Blessed Royal Westminster Band and our choir. So that will be going on. Uh, it, admission is by donation, and those donations over $20 will receive a receipt. Uh, and those funds go to support the outreach work of the parish. Uh, on Sunday the 24th, uh, there will be one service in the morning at 10 o'clock for the fourth Sunday of Advent, and then at 7 o'clock will be the Christmas Eve service uh, with a 10 o'clock service on Christmas Day. So, uh, as I said, it will be a busy time. Now, speaking This week, the search committee will be conducting interviews of the candidates on the shortlist for uh, the next priest in charge of the parish. Um, those will be taking place in the parish hall. So two things. First off, pray for the search committee and for the candidates as we go through this interview process. Second thing. Stay away from the parish hall <laughs> on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 3 to 6.30. Um, the office isn't closed, so there's no reason for you to be there for that. Uh, and it doesn't conflict with any of the groups that use it in the evening, so don't come early. Choir, don't come early. Uh, it is the practice of our diocese to maintain a, a high level of confidentiality when we are interviewing. Um, it's not always helpful, for example, when, some, when one parish learns that their priest is interviewing at another and they don't know anything about it. Not a good news. Particularly if that priest doesn't get appointed. So, stay away from the parish hall. Right? If it's a real emergency, call me on my number. I'll take care of it. Not at the parish hall. So, uh, that's good news. We're making progress towards the appointment of the priest. Uh, who will come sometime later in the new year. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that, how that goes. Join us, please, for coffee and tea. Thanks to Rob for preaching today. And, uh, please take time over at the parish hall to say hello to Rob uh, and uh, get to connected with, with our, our provincial college and the school today. Oh, sorry. Good morning. As Richard has mentioned, please let me know if you are attending on December the 10th. There's two ways that you can do it. On the back of the bulletin today, it says my email address. Also, over in the hall, there's a table with four sheets of paper. I promised last week that there would be things that I would be asking for help. And those four sheets of paper are indicating the help that I would like. I sincerely hope that we can have the, all the places filled. As Richard said, we had a funeral here yesterday. We had five ladies. The least amount of time that one was here was four hours. The rest of us were here quite a bit longer. We've decided that we're getting a little bit older.
try and keep up with everything and we need a little bit more help than we've been asking for. So I sincerely hope that you will look at the uh, sheets of paper in the hall and please sign there if you're coming or send uh, an email to me. Please don't tell me because I'll forget the time I need. Thank you. Volunteers would like a confession. All may, none must. Some should. <laughs> May God, the Holy One of Israel, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. May Christ, the incarnate Word, come to full stature within you. Amen. May the Spirit, Advocate and Guide, make you faithful servants of God's promised reign of justice and peace. Amen. For the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Closing hymn 399. serving him wherever and in whomever you find.